Hey, good morning everybody, it's Dan here. I am a storage auction treasure hunter and I am on my way to Bridgeport, Connecticut right now uh, to go meet somebody at a uh, storage facility. Now, um, I, I do love treasure hunting and storage auctions are my uh, main uh, means of treasure hunting, but uh, I am not going to an auction today. I spoke with a woman who found me through one of my blogs. Um, I do some blogging regarding my um, you know, personal property and estate buyouts and somebody had found me through my blog and they have two storage units filled with stuff they're moving, they're downsizing, they're doing something and they want me to come and handle both storage units filled with the items that they have so this I'm pretty excited about, it sounds like she's got some nice stuff, sounds like household items um, you know flat panel TV, nice couches, fridge, washer dryer, these kinds of things but I'm looking at this as a storage auction without the competition. I'm going there to inspect the uh, contents of both storage units and I'm going to negotiate a fair price for this woman and then hopefully we'll be able to do business together, her and I. So I am looking at this as a storage auction, so to speak, because I'm going to be negotiating with her, although I'm not going to be in a position of having to compete with other auction buyers on who's going to pay the highest price. Now, you know, I've been doing this for six years, so I have a really good idea at this point what I can reasonably sell uh, um, household items for. And I always attend my storage auctions looking to buy at such a low price that I'll still be able to sell the merchandise at low enough prices to turn them over quickly yet make a profit. So whatever number I'm going to be able to offer this woman, it's going to have to be, um, you know, th that, that kind of an offer. Low enough to be fair to her yet that I'm going to be able to turn these items over quickly so that they're not in my possession too long collecting dust. That right there is a financial loser. If you have to pay a high you know, price <clears throat> for your items that's so high that you have to hold on to them for a long time in hopes of making money. My philosophy is to buy real low and still sell low and make money, especially in this shitty economy you know, we're not able to command premium prices for items anymore. We want to be able to sell those items uh, low enough that we can turn them over quickly. So I'm on my way now to meet this woman and uh, I'm hoping that we can strike a deal and that I can offer her a deposit, put my own lock on the doors of these storage units and, um, and you know, worry about finishing up the transaction at a future time. I'll go back up there in the van. But um, anyway, one other thing I want to mention too is, is this woman had found me from one of my blogs and uh, you know this video is not a referendum on internet marketing or blogging but I have gotten quite a few calls these types of similar calls from people that found me on my blog so I do try to use my blog and other means of internet marketing to expand my business reach and you can do the same but if you do blog if you do do YouTube videos if you do a Facebook fan page these kinds of things which I have you know each of those three things I just mentioned I do have those but they require attention you don't build a blog and throw one article out there and expect good things to happen it's an ongoing process of posting articles uh, doing videos paying attention to your Facebook fan page whatever it is you might be doing it's an ongoing process it doesn't happen overnight it happens over time but anyway it is encouraging when you get these kinds of calls from your blog or you know from your Facebook fan page whatever it might be it just kinda you know it gives you the encouragement to continue and keep going but anyway I just went off on that little bit of an internet marketing tangent stick with me because I'll let you know what happens as soon as I meet with her so one of the things that makes treasure hunting a lot of work is right in the term the word hunt is what makes this a lot of work because you can go out and you can put in the effort and the time and come up empty but that's what treasure hunting is I mean uh, you know when people go out and they explore for oil they put an awful lot of time into it and may come up empty when you pan for gold put a lot of time into it you can come up empty if you use your metal detector out on the beach you can put a lot of time into it and come up empty so now I'm driving home after meeting this woman at this uh, storage facility and I'm leaving having come up empty. Uh, the reason why, well first of all she had uh, two storage units filled with junk. Particle board furniture, shitty dirty old appliances, uh, pleather couches, just a lot of worthless junk. 
And when I did speak with the woman over the phone, I did ask her a number of qualifying questions. The problem is, she did not answer those questions truthfully. She told me she had a couple of TVs, and I asked her, well, what kind of TVs? Are they flat screen TVs? And she told me yes. When in fact, they weren't. They were just, uh, you know, um, shitty old clunky tube TVs. I asked her what kind of furniture. Was it leather? She told me yes. But no, it's not leather. It was pleather. It was, you know, this, this simulated... And I told her, I was like, ma'am, a lot of the things you're trying to sell here, if, 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 this is a storage unit that I wouldn't pay more than $50 for at auction. And a lot of times when I, when I clear out one of my storage units and I process the stuff, a lot of the things that she was trying to t uh, sell, I tell her I literally put on the curb or I um, just, you know, give away, put, put, for, you know, put free ads on Craigslist just to have somebody else come along and haul the crap away for free. So anyway, here I am leaving empty-handed but not disappointed because... <clears throat> You know, every time you go out on a treasure hunt that winds up unsuccessful, you at least have got some more valuable experience on your side. In these videos I post, I try to keep it as real as possible. I try to show you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, an example of the good is, is paying a, some price for an abandoned storage unit and finding stuff inside that enables you to quadruple your money or more. Um, the bad is, uh, for example, I, I bought a storage unit a couple of months ago, and the only thing in there I found was a safe. The safe was in plain view, and I bid up to $250 for that unit simply because I was curious to see what was inside the safe. I brought the safe to a locksmith who was able to open it up for me based on the serial number found on the safe, and inside was absolutely nothing. I paid $250 for that unit, the safe was the only thing in there, and I was able to sell the safe for $60. Bucks. So that was, a pretty, that was a $190 loss. So that's an example of the bad. And then the ugly is what happened today, where I did ask this woman qualifying questions to determine whether or not it was worth my time to go up there and take a look at what she had. She was not truthful with me, and it turned out to be a um, you know, two-hour round trip that uh, went nowhere. So that is an example of the ugly. So in these videos I post for you guys, I do try to keep it real by showing you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, not everything is going to be a uh, home run. Hell, not everything is going to be a single. Sometimes you're going to strike out. Sometimes you won't even get up to the plate. So anyway, that's it. My final thoughts on that. Again, comment below. I would love to hear from you about your treasure hunting experiences. As always, uh, Dan here signing off. I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.